Welcome to Careless Coder, today lesson 7 in Commodore 64 assembly, custom character sets. Motherfucker! So today we're going to create a custom character set, it's an elongated character and then we will apply our knowledge from the last lesson to make it pulse in these weird psychedelic candy like colors. Now the Commodore 64 was brilliant in the fact that it could actually rewrite a character set in RAM. So you can point the VIC, that is the video processor, to an area in RAM and you have a defined character set there. Now really clever coders actually would have two or three of those sets and quickly change depending on where they were on the raster line to have even more than 255 individual character blocks. So basically the majority of the games that we're playing are actually the background is character based. And then we have a couple of uh, foreground uh, sprites and we come to that later. But yeah, that is basically how they did that. It's the majority of the games are actually character based. But because we could make our own characters, we have these lovely little graphics by 1982 standards, let's be honest. Since the code is getting very substantial, I will not be coding it every step of the way. That was the first five lessons I took you by the hand. And basically what we're doing here only builds upon those lessons. The stuff that is completely new, like for example, pointing uh, the Vic to a new character set, we will actually implement from scratch. But the rest I will just quickly talk you through. And another big thing is we're going to now use some includes to uh, not have to do the constant thing all the time. So I created this SM file called memorymap.asm. And what it does, this is kick assembler specific. Uh, I create a structure called Vic and in that Vic you have a label screen that points to, in this case, 400. So I can use Vic.screen instead of a screen and a constant. And here for the sit. And we will just extend these in the lessons when we need to. So how do you use this? Well, you import it and, well, import already says it. Use the Directive import and we call it uh, called it memory map .asm. right? <coughs> so now it should build, but it should only work partially. But it allows me to show you what I did with the font. As you can see, we have a normal font and the inverted font, and here too blank space, and then the inverted value and those. A freaky psychedelic colors moving to the left. Uh, this is how I set up my uh, elongated font. They're just 127 positions apart. So this would be the top of my font and this would be the bottom of my font. And how we create those we will uh, demonstrate after we've done the code. But first let us get this to work. So it is set up in the setup. And the setup calls points to RAM character set. So we first need to have a RAM character set. And we need to make a decision where to store it. So we're going to actually store this on 3000. So how do we do this? Well, we need to load what is currently in the Vic memory setup. And again, that is in the memory map. It's just a constant. It's called label. It's just a constant. Nothing different. So we have whatever is currently in there in the uh, 018 in A. And it basically says you do not change these. Well, they shouldn't matter. Well, I don't want to change them. So we're going to end them by hey, 240. Oh, I had a different keyboard layout. Right. So we're going to end it by 240 because 11111 0000 obviously is 
to 40. You should know that. If you don't know that, then you should be ashamed of yourself and not call yourself a programmer. So basically we just set these bits to zero and even say uh, this doesn't really matter if we change that. I know that from experience. So we can just or it by, uh, we want it on 3000, right? 1100 is 12. And if you don't believe me, 1100 is 12. And we need to store that to the Vic memory setup again because then we basically point to a RAM character set. And we now need to import that RAM character set, of course, on that same address, 3000. By the way, in later lessons, we will actually move this to 2000 because the sit tune that I chose to play in the background of our scroller actually used less memory than I expected. But for now, we keep it at 3000. So how do we actually import it? Well, the same as we imported those Vic labels, import, and I call it car set one. .asm. And it needs to be, of course, imported from address 3000. So this says just like we done before, if we actually want to assemble something at a thousand, start at 3000. So everything that comes below this is located at 3000. And this should just work and it will pulse. There we go. We have a nice custom character set and it pulses. Let's briefly walk through the code for those people that uh, may have some difficulty understanding it to reprime them and then we will show you how those characters are made. So the character set uh, is set up here. We actually did that in code. And then we set the border and the screen to black and we clear the screen. The clear screen is a bit different. Uh, this is a little more efficient. I use 250 characters instead of the 255 and it aligns a bit better, but it's the one that we basically used all the time. If you don't understand this, go back, watch from the beginning, from lesson one up to here. Uh, fill color line, this is basically what we did in the last lesson, but there we filled the whole screen. Here we just get a gradient color and we write it to those two lines that will contain the text. And we start from the left, we just write it all the way to the beginning. So the text, well, that is something new, but basically we did that before. Uh, we read a character from a string. This string is called text one, text one. We read that and we write that on a position. And here you see, I add that 127 to get to that uh, next character, that inverted character. And I write it on the next line. So creating that extended character and we increment the X. But when uh, the character that is being read is zero, then we just jump out. That is as simple as it gets. Then we cycle through the colors. Well, that is just uh, reading the color at position uh, zero, moving everything to the left and putting that color on position zero back at the beginning. So it will loop infinitely. You should understand this. This is just a little bit different than the scrolling uh, because we just insert back what we read from the beginning at the end. So basically we're just looping the colors around. And then we have that frame weight because we need to wait for a frame. Otherwise it will be uh, seizure inducing flashing. In lesson nine, we actually use a, a raster interrupt for this. Currently this will suffice and then we loop forever. Now the student of you may wonder why do we keep writing that text because the text doesn't change, it doesn't move. True, we could move it up here, would be more efficient. 
But in the next lesson, as the doc, uh, comment already says, we're going to scroll this. We're first going to do hard scrolling, and the lesson after that, we're going to do soft scrolling. Right, so now how did I create that character set? Well, in the comment already I alluded to it, we're going to use a lovely little web app. Let's load it from scratch. Reload, yes please. And you can open my project, it's font-project.pe. And here you see this is my project. And these are those allocated uh, fonts this is the top of the a as you can see and this is the bottom of the a and they are 127 apart so how did i do this let's take for example uh, let's make a big asterisk yeah let's do that that's relatively simple we go to the chars we click the chart that we want to change. I uh, lost myself. Uh, click on that. Where is it? Oh, there. So if we want to elongate this, let's uh, do it this way. Huh? Right. I'm actually going to copy it because it's uh, symmetrical, but just rotate it. Copy it. And I will find that one that is 128 apart. Clear it, paste mine, and rotate, and rotate again. And let's do a little bit of an embellishment in there. So now we have a uh, hashtag that we can actually show here. Let's uh, take this one for the top position, and the one uh, 127 characters below this one for the bottom position. And that is how I did A through Z and the exclamation mark, the question mark, and the dot. I didn't do the letters. If you want to do the letters, go ahead yourself. Because this is a hell of a job. Actually, in the day, I created a program on my PC to actually do this. And later on, on my ST. And we had one guy, uh, my partner in crime, who actually... Uh, was really good at creating characters and graphics. Uh, so he just did that. Uh, it was really cool. And one thing that annoyed me in my demo was uh, the B. So let's uh, edit that, edit care set, that B, uh, sorry, that B. I figured that it should be something like that. Um, maybe a little embellishment here, something like that. That should be a, no, nah, no, 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 just like so. Even I'm improving on my uh, own work as I go along. Let's see, yeah, that's, that's a lot better. So how do you actually export this? Let me first save this, don't wanna lose this. And you will get the latest version, replace. You go to the cars and you click on the character set you want to export. We export to assembly code, and here it actually already generates all the code that you need. Although it's not kick assembler specific, because kick assembler uses slash slash for commons. And we already set up everything, and we don't want this there as well. We have that in our code base. So we're just going to copy this. We come and see this. And just let me show you what I did. I just paste it in here right and now we have to make it kick assembler aware so basically what we're going to do is search and replace the byte with for dot byte and do it for all boom and that is it that is it and in the combination with setting your memory location and importing it that is all there is to actually import a custom character set so there you have it i want to see my new uh, 
Hashtag. Let's let's put in my hashtag. It might be. Let's put in my hashtag, and I want to see that B. Oh, little B. You always should use small characters here. Oh yes, and we have a nice little B there. Yeah, it's actually overextending, but that's perfectly fine. Yeah, that's a nice hashtag. It could be mistaken by. Oh, actually, we made an error. It looks like an H. You probably already saw that. And now I need to fix that. I need to fix that. Cannot help myself. Everybody was already screaming at me. Dude, you're fucking up as usual. Where is where is it here? So we need to do this. That is it. And then we go to the bottom one. That is this one. And we do that here. And I want my little embellishment. Now let's have a look at the screen. Yeah, now that is a hashtag. Do we want to actually separate it a bit more? Yes, let's separate it a bit more. And this is how you can spend a whole youth just fucking around with characters in a character set. And trust me, we did that a lot. Alright, let's see if my... Yeah, that's better. That is a lot better. Excuse me. And let's export it again. Export to assembly. Copy it from here. Apple C. Copy it there. And just replace that. Boom. All right. Now we have a proper hashtag or pound sign. Yeah, that is a better pound sign. And I love my B thingy as well. Yeah. So there you have it. It is really simple to use a custom character set in the Commodore 64. Basically, you just have three lines of code telling the VIC chip where to find that character set. And that's basically an end with 240 and an OR with that uh, location where you want it to be. And then you store it back. Uh, for four instructions and you just import that character set on that location in your assembler of choice in our case kick assembler it is very trivial the rest that we talked through is just embellishment to make these cores pulse and do weird things now as a homework assignment i really urge you to actually make this text scroll to the left you should be able to do that right now because you have all this knowledge accumulated in these last six or including this one seven lessons that should be trivial to actually move it over and do that with hard scrolling hard scrolling is basically a character at a time and later on in lesson nine we will actually do smooth scrolling in lesson eight i will just show you the scrolling that we did so I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.